Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Super Car Guy channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to maintain the seals and keep the moving parts of your convertible hardtop lubricated in this simple DIY. To be clear, I'm not an expert, but after doing lots of research and experience from my friends, as well as experience I've had from other cars, this should be the best way to maintain your retractable roof in tip-top condition. Before we get to the rest of the video, I welcome all comments, so leave your tips and tricks down below. Also, don't forget to like the video as it really helps out and subscribe to the channel. One of the biggest fears with getting a convertible BMW is that it may creak, squeak, leak water, or allow wind noise inside the cabin. The roof has hundreds of different components, including hydraulics, micro switches, seals, hinges, and all of that has to work together in order for your roof to function properly. I don't think I'm wrong in saying that a lot of people would love to have a convertible BMW, but not many want to maintain it. Uh, and if you take it to a dealer, it's a very costly job for them just to, you know, lubricate all the hinges and uh, maintain all of the seal. So we're gonna take care of all that stuff. Now let's get to the DIY portion of the video, get it all nicely maintained and ready to go for summer. If you would like to skip straight to conditioning seals and lubricating moving parts, go to the time on the screen. I recommend doing this maintenance at least once a year if you use the roof a lot. So if you open and close the roof, let's say in the morning and then at night, so twice a day, I would recommend doing it at least twice a year then just to make sure everything is functioning properly. Uh, one of the ways to tell that you need maintenance is to listen to your roof for any issues, rattles or squeaks. It should make no noise when it's opening or closing. It should be smooth and operating. Smooth, quiet, that's how it should be. If your roof makes any additional noise than this, it definitely needs some maintenance. If you're having issues with opening or closing the roof, let's say it's going really slow or stopping halfway, there could be a few different things. First one, you could be leaking hydraulic fluid. So what we're gonna do is check the hydraulic unit and see if there's any fluid that's leaking. Now it's in your trunk, right where the battery is. You're gonna remove this sound protection. And this is your hydraulic unit. At the bottom here, there is a reservoir that holds all of the hydraulic fluid. Now this is a lifetime fluid and should never need to be replaced or topped off. But if you have a leak somewhere or you know something of that nature, uh, this is where you'd wanna check first. Now you can remove this bar and then pull it out it's not really attached to anything but for me I'm not gonna do that I just check from the side and as you can see that's where the fluid is so it should be to about that level which it is in my case so it looks good here but if yours is pretty low this is something to look into if it's not the hydraulic system that's causing issues with your retractable roof it can definitely be your hull sensors that have gone bad uh, or micro switches. So these are all the hold sensors that are on this roof as well as all the micro switches. So as you can see, there's a lot of them, right? Um, usually it's a little bit more difficult to troubleshoot, but hopefully if you have an issue, you'll get a code so you know which one to replace and you kind of work from there. Now that we have physical and electronic things out of the way, we're gonna get to the maintenance part of the video. And as the first step, you're just gonna clean all of these area so all the seals this is a seal this is a seal um, even you know th these little parts here uh, this seal as well once i'm done with the trunk area i'm going to open the roof up and do everything that's within the retractable roof i'm going to be using just soapy water i put some soap and water in the spray bottle and i'm going to use a simple micro fiber cloth so just spray and white. So we have to clean all of these areas before we can actually lubricate and do all the stuff that we need to do with them. Just to make things clear, please don't spray any water into your electronics or big hinges and moving parts such as these. To make it clear when i say seals i mean all of these rubbery squishy parts right uh, but they don't necessarily have to be squishy as well it could be you know like all this stuff as well these are all seals as well so the next step is to use this gummy flech stiff um, it's obviously a german product uh, but all it is is a, a seal conditioner that's all it is so what we're gonna do is 
take our gummy stift, right? You're gonna push this in so it starts releasing the product. Flip it over and apply. Now, obviously I'm doing this with one hand at the moment, which isn't ideal. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is grab a clean towel. That way, if there's any leaks or anything like that, you don't wanna get that stuff on glass or on paint or anything uh, of that nature. So you just slowly go and then press more to release a little bit more product and keep going. You're gonna do that to all of the seals. And I'm gonna show you a picture on the screen right now of what those seals are. And as well as, you know, in the video in the next couple of minutes. Now, once you get to areas like this where you can't really get it with this applicator, um, you can put some gloves on, or, you know, if you're like me, you don't need to put gloves on. And then you just want to get as much of that stuff in there as you think is needed, just like that. So all of these really weird little sections, get them with your hand, get them with a little, maybe if you want to get a Q-tip or something like that, you can use that as well. Just make sure it's all nice and applied. Before we get to the actual roof, we're gonna do the trunk area. So we're gonna do this bottom one, this metal seal, as well as this top one. Don't forget this one, it's very important so the water doesn't leak into your trunk. Um, but also these little ones right here. So these ones, they make a seal with your trunk lid. You definitely don't want any water getting into this mechanism, you know, the whole roof area. All right, the trunk area is all done. As you can see, it's all nice and conditioned. I'm gonna leave it for, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, let it absorb a little bit, and then move on to the next area. Don't forget to raise the trunk lid the other way and do the seals that it reveals, such as all of this stuff. Definitely want to get those done as well. Okay, this area is done now also. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is the most important part about conditioning your seals. You definitely want to do a good job sealing all of this door seal stuff, right? On both parts of the roof. But not only that, you have a lot of different seals here in the back. So you have this one that goes between uh, the lower part and the top part. So this is definitely uh, something that you need to clean really well and condition a lot. Make sure this is really, really well done. Now, don't forget this one at the top because there is one at the top and you want to condition it from inside and out. And it goes all the way here and transitions into this seal as well. Now this top part is done and it's really really important that you do a good job with these seals as you can see i had to pull it down a little bit and apply the conditioner even inside so it's on the bottom right here as well as inside of this seal so you want to spend a little bit of time doing both of these these are probably the most crucial ones for a lot of leakages especially into the trunk also, don't forget these corners, they're very important. I put some inside of these little channels and you know, in every little crevice that I cut. Same in here. So you wanna pull this back and you know, do a good job in here as well. All of the rubber seals are now lubricated and looking pretty good, nice and moisturized, which is what you're trying to do. You don't want them to be dry or cracked anywhere on the car and if they are you should probably replace them so now it's time to move on to step two which is lubricating all of the hinges and connecting parts such as this one right here uh, that operates the roof now there's a lot of little pieces here that need to be lubricated and i'm going to show you exactly what to do i'm going to be using a never cease uh, lithium lubricating compound 
This is what BMW recommends on their manuals and that's why I'm using it. Of course, there are many other ones that you can be using, but since BMW recommends this one and a lot of forum members also seem to be preferring this one, that's what I'm gonna go with. Now for a lot of other parts, such as smaller uh, connections such as these, uh, I will be using uh, a 3-in-1 three, three oil or WD-40 just to make sure they're lubricated. And I'll show you which ones should be lubricated with which uh, product. As the first step, I'm going to be cleaning off the area, make sure there's no rust. I don't want to be pushing any of this rust into the connections. Never Cease comes in a few different containers. This is the one that comes with a brush. I prefer it because I can be a little bit more accurate as to where I apply the compound. So here it goes. Now that I have applied a good amount of the compound, I'm gonna push it in with my finger and a glove. This is a lithium grease. You don't really wanna be touching it with your finger. So I'm gonna kind of push it into all the little crevices here between the moving mechanisms. So you wanna you want make sure you get it all nice and spread, especially on these parts right here. This is the most important part for it not to squeak or creak. This stuff is very, very sticky, so be careful not to drip it on anything else in the car or clean it off right away. In areas where you don't think you can get the lithium compound properly inserted, I'm gonna be using some WD-40 and a towel to make sure it doesn't drip anywhere. And just spray a little bit in between uh, the moving parts. You can also use 3-in-1 oil, that seems like the second most recommended product. Now this section is pretty much done, I'm just going to clean off any excess lithium grease such as at the top, you know, parts that don't really need to be lubricated in any way. This part you definitely don't want to clean off, this should be fully uh, coated. As you can see, these are all the parts that I used the lithium grease on. And little parts like here, this is where I sprayed the WD-40. It actually just stripped, better wipe that off. Uh, so this moving part, that part over here on this side, you know, things where you can't really stuff the grease in. Uh, I just put a little bit of WD-40 uh, and that should do the job. So once I'm done with this whole mechanism, that other side, as well as you know, this one, that one, and all of these moving parts, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to raise this lower part. So it's kind of in this location and then do uh, whatever's underneath. All right, here's a quick update. I put the lithium grease within these big moving parts right here, the big joints, and then on these connecting parts right here, which then join into this location, as well as on this side. All the other parts, I put WD-40, so all of this mechanism, I put a little bit of WD-40 in all of the connections, as well as this hinge right here. I know it's a little noisy, my neighbors are getting their grass cut, but I did this side as well now. As you can see, it's all done, all looped up, as, a, as in the previous side. Lithium grease on the bigger joints, and then just regular WD-40 on all of the smaller stuff. To be clear, BMW only recommends putting the lithium grease on this joint, this joint right here, that one, this one, ooh, left one out, and this one. I choose to put it on these bigger ones just so, you know, water or moisture doesn't get in and it doesn't rust. Next, I put the roof in this position so it gives us access to one of the most important parts to grease, which is that little hook right there. This is the one we're talking about. I mean, it's slowly sinking, so it's hard to show, but basically you must, must put grease on the inside of that hook right there, as well as grease those up, these little links right there. 
I just figured out that if you position it straight up, it's not gonna be going down nearly as fast. So you have a little bit more time, but you still gotta hurry up. And there you go, now it's all lubricated. Now we have the roof almost entirely opened and this is the next area to lubricate. So we're gonna do a little bit of here and on the inside of this hook. This goes into this area right here. So we're gonna put a little bit on the inside and over this roller. Well guys, our hardtop roof is now fully serviced. We conditioned all of the seals. We lubricated all of the moving parts, including the hinges, uh, the little clips, everything that we needed to lubricate. The car should be good for the entire season, at least in my case, I don't use the roof that much. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you learned something and you can perform the service at home. Save a bunch of money from the dealer. Don't forget to like, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, it really does help out. And I'm going to operate the roof now, just so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. If you're just making some extra noises, you might have missed a spot. You may have to go back and repeat some of the steps that we have done so far. But now, let's take a listen. It's absolutely silent. I'm gonna go the other way now. No noise. Just like it should be. Perfect. I'll see you guys in the next one.